In this video, I wanted to provide an example of how we can use IV estimation in practice. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how we can evaluate the returns to education. So how does an individual's level of education affect their level of wages? Well, actually, in particular, we're actually going to be looking at an individual's level of log wages. So we're sort of looking at percentage, how sort of education affects wages in percentage terms, rather. And we also think that there might be another variable which might affect an individual's level of wages, which is something which we call an individual's level of innate ability. So when I write the equation like this, it sort of seems quite simple to estimate. But the problem is that we don't generally have an individual's level of innate ability, so it kind of gets contained in some sort of composite error, which I'm going to call sort of VI here. And the problem which that poses is that you might sort of hypothesize that an individual's level of innate ability might be correlated with an individual's level of education which they choose. So this might be the number of years of education. And because of this positive correlation between the two variables, and because we think that an individual's level of innate ability might affect an individual's level of wages, the sort of OLS estimate which we get for beta here is going to be upwardly biased, or we think it could be upwardly biased, because intuitively our sort of education variable is taking some of the credit of this ability variable here. So the idea is that we are looking for some instrument, Z, which affects an individual's level of education, but importantly doesn't affect an individual's level of innate ability. So by changing Z, we're changing an individual's level of education, which then has a sort of knock-on effect on wages, but we know that the sort of changes in wages are only due to education for this particular instrument Z. In this video, we're going to be looking at the work which Angrist and Kruger did in 1990, and they were particularly interested in this particular problem above here. They were interested in estimating the returns which education has on log wage. And the instrument which they chose here was the quarter in which an individual was born. So they looked at the quarter in which an individual was born, so they looked at those people that were born in the fourth quarter and those that were born in the first quarter of the year. And what this did is it affected the age at which an individual tended to enter school. So those individuals that were born in the fourth quarter tended to enter school at an age of around five and three quarters, whereas those that were born in the first quarter of the year tended to enter school at an age of six and three quarters. And because of the fact that there was a law which put some sort of stipulation on the sort of minimum age which an individual could leave school, they had to wait until their 16th birthday at least before they left school, that meant that the individuals who tended to be born on, on the sort of fourth quarter, tended on average to spend longer in school than those that were born in the first quarter of the year. So you can already see how this instrument might be sort of influencing the situation. So those individuals that were born in the fourth quarter, opposed to those that were born in the first quarter, tended to spend longer in school, so that sort of increased their level of education. But the sort of quarter in which an individual was, was, was born is surely not going to have any effect on their level of innate ability. So you can already see how this instrument has the sort of nice properties which we want, namely that the sort of covariance of Z, our instrument, in which in this case is the sort of quarter of birth, with education doesn't equal zero, and that the covariance of Z with ability does equal zero. So we, in principle, sort of have a good instrument here. But further, what Angrist and Kruger do is they actually graphically illustrate this. So they look at the number of years of education against the sort of quarter of birth for a sort of bunch of individuals born from 1930 to 1939. And they find the following sort of pattern. They saw this sort of sawtooth pattern in terms of the number of years of education which an individual tended to spend in school. And furthermore, when they looked at the particular dips in this pattern, they found that the sort of troughs in this pattern were those individuals that were born on the first quarter, of, or in the first quarter of the year, rather. 
And those sort of peaks in the sort of years of education were those individuals that were born in the fourth quarter. And that illustrated to Angriston Kruger that their instrument was actually having some effect on the number of years of education. And they sort of estimated that the sort of difference in terms of the average number of years of school, which the two sort of cohorts tended to spend at school, was about 0.1 years. Because remember, just because the sort of minimum age of 16 means that they can leave school, doesn't necessarily mean that the individuals will leave school. And that's what they sort of est estimate here, the sort of 0.1 years actually picked up. But it did show that there was a sort of relationship between our instrument and our sort of independent variable, the number of years of education. So that was a sort of interesting thing to do. So when Angus and Kruger replaced the number of years of education by the log of wage, then they found a similar pattern. They found that they saw this similar sort of jagged edge structure to what they saw above. And further, when they looked at the sort of troughs in this particular pattern, they found that they were also exactly the same. They found that the individuals that were born in the first quarter of the year tended to earn less than those that were born in the fourth quarter of the year. And by sort of graphically illustrating this relationship, it sort of became quite clear as to the causal nature of what was going on. Namely that the sort of, uh, or precisely that the sort of instrumental variable was causing differences in individuals' level of education, which in turn was causing sort of differences in an individual's level of log wage. And actually they found that the sort of difference between the sort of first quarter and the fourth quarter individuals in terms of log wage was about 0.01. And because of this, they were able to sort of produce an IV estimate for the sort of effect of a year of education by taking the sort of difference in log wages and dividing it by the sort of difference in the number of years because we're sort of we're not interested in 0.1 years we're interested in one year the sort of effect of one year of education on wages so they found that the sort of proportional effect of a year of education on wages was about 0.1 and actually, as it turned out, this wasn't actually all that different from the estimate which they got from estimating the same relationship using OLS. So this seemed to suggest one of two things. Either that education is not really that correlated with an individual's level of innate ability, or that an individual's level of ability doesn't really affect their level of wages. And actually, to me, it probably sounds more like the sort of former because you would expect an individual's level of ability to affect their level of wages. So I might sort of conclude from this that an individual's level of education probably isn't that correlated with an individual's level of innate ability. So I hope that this video has provided some insight into how instrumental variables estimation works in practice. In the next video, I'm going to be providing another example of this. I'll see you then.